Welcome to Wise Software's Visual Cam video series. In this video, you will learn how to use the Import Wizard to load multiple files at once into Visual Cam and the different file types that can be imported. I'll start with a new file. Then in the File menu, click on the Import Import Wizard command. When the dialog box opens, you will notice that it is resizable and can be made larger if necessary. The Import Wizard allows you to load in multiple files at once, including Gerber, Aperture Lists, NC Drill or Mill, DXF, HPGL, and VisualCam files. VisualCam will automatically recognize the file types and imports the specified files into the first empty block of consecutive layers found. The Import Wizard dialog contains four pages. Page 1 is where you select the folder that contains the files you want to import. My data is in is used to tell the wizard where the files are located in the computer. Click on the Browse button to the right of the text box to search for the folder. Note that when you use the Import Wizard, all the files you wish to import should be in the same folder. Click on the OK button to continue. The Configure File Types to Ignore button opens the Configuration dialog box and takes you directly to the General tab, where you may enter any file name extensions that you want the program to ignore when scanning the folder. The more files that may be safely ignored, the faster the Import Wizard will be able to scan the specified folder. Click on the OK button to continue. Once file type extensions are set, VisualCam will remember these, so you do not have to set them each time you use the Import Wizard. If you are loading in 274D Gerber files, you will need to also load in an Aperture List. The Configure Aperture List Converters button opens the Configuration dialog box and takes you directly to the App List Converters tab, where you may specify which Aperture List converters should be enabled. The more Aperture List converters enabled, the longer it will take to scan the specified folder. Click on the OK button to continue. Again, once the Aperture Converters are enabled, VisualCam will remember these, so you do not have to set them each time you use the Import Wizard. Click on the Next button to go to Page 2. If at any time you want to make changes to the settings before running the command, click on the Back button to return to a previous page. Page 2 presents the list of files that VisualCam found in the selected Import folder. Clicking once on the list column headers will sort the list based on the data within the respective columns. File name check marks tell VisualCam to import the files. Clicking the Unselect All Importable button will remove the check marks next to all file names. You can then go back and check only those files you want to import. File Type lists the type for each file that VisualCam found in the folder. By default, the wizard only displays those files it can identify. Selecting the Show Unknown File Types option will tell the wizard to display all files contained in the selected import folder. If a file cannot be identified, three question marks will appear. If VisualCam detects the file type incorrectly, you may change it by clicking on the file type in question and selecting the correct type from the shortcut menu. The Data Format column indicates the detected data format for each file. Clicking once on the data type for a file will present you with a dialog box where you can override the detected format. If the file is Gerber, the Gerber Import Data Format dialog box will appear. If you find that the format settings were not detected correctly, you will use this dialog to verify and or set the correct file format. The first thing to look at is the size listed above the preview pane. This is the detected board dimensions. If the indicated size is significantly larger or smaller than the actual design, you can click the Set Min Max Board Size button and specify a more accurate range for the board. VisualCam will then recalculate the size based upon those limits. If your boards typically fall within a certain size range and use the same data format, specifying a minimum and maximum board size value and saving the settings as the default values can aid the import process in the future. If the system still cannot detect the format correctly, you can fix this by manually changing any of the settings in this dialog. The most common settings that need to be changed are the M.N setting, 
or the zero suppression setting. I will detail each setting for your reference. Starting with dialect, this is the format of the imported file. Available options are RS274D, RS274X, and FIRE9000. M.N is the coordinate format, which defines the number of digits before and after an implied decimal point. In absolute coordinate mode, all XY coordinates are referenced to a common origin. In incremental coordinate mode, each XY coordinate is a displacement from the previous coordinate. In zero suppression, none allows coordinates to have zeros in front or back of integers. Leading shows zeros only at the end of a number, and trailing shows zeros only at the beginning of a number. The character set is typically ASCII. You may enable metric mode indicating that your files are in metric format. Select Honor CRLF if carriage return and line feeds should be honored as block terminators. The Merge Polygons option controls how polygons are handled. G36 and G37 commands in Gerber. If you select Merge Polygons, files with multiple G36, G37 polygons that touch or overlap are combined. If positive data, two or more polygons become one. If a positive polygon is overlapped by a negative polygon, it becomes a positive polygon with a void. If you do not select this option, all polygons will be individual entities. Dark and clear polarity are maintained, though the clear items will appear black in the workspace. If your files have step and repeat codes, you can choose Flatten SNR to import all the stepped and repeated images as real data. For example, you are importing a panel and want to have all the images editable instead of virtual. If you are importing 274X files, you can have polarity managed in two different ways. Individual Items imports each file as a single layer and assigns polarity on an item-by-item -item basis. If Layer Composites is selected, then a layer with the correct polarity is created for every logical layer, LP command, in the imported file, resulting in a composite. For more information, see the Working with Item Level Polarity and Composite Layers video in the same series. On Gerber imports, it is recommended that you use all ARCs 360 as the default parameter. Apply to is the directory path and name of the file you are importing. Format sample displays the text version of your file. You cannot edit the contents of the file here. This is only for your reference. Use the Set as Default button to save the current settings as the defaults for files whose format cannot be identified by VisualCam. If an imported file can be identified, the format settings will be set accordingly, not to the default settings that you save. Use the Use Default button to apply the saved default settings to imported files. Any detected settings are overridden. Once your settings are complete, click on the OK button to continue, and you will notice the data format is updated in the dialog. If the file is an aperture list or an NC tool list, the Select Converter dialog box will appear. VisualCam will select an appropriate aperture converter to use for the aperture list if one is available. But you can override the selection by selecting a different converter to use from the data format list. You can have the selection applied to all incoming aperture lists by clicking the Apply to All button, and you can create a new converter by clicking the New Converter button. Click on the OK button to continue. If the file is NC, Drill, or Mill data, the NC Import Data Format dialog box will appear. If you find that the format settings were not detected correctly, you will use this dialog to verify and or set the correct file format. The first thing to look at is the size listed above the preview pane. This is the detected bore dimensions. If the indicated size is significantly larger or smaller than the actual design, you can click the Set Min-Max Board Size button and specify a more accurate range for the board. VisualCam will then recalculate the size based upon those limits. If your boards typically fall within a certain size range and use the same data format, specifying a minimum and maximum board size value 
and saving the settings as the default values can aid the import process in the future. If the system still cannot detect the format correctly, you can fix by manually changing any of the settings in this dialog. The most common setting that needs to be changed is the m.n setting. I will detail each NC data setting for your reference. The destination layer is where the NC data will be placed. Note that within the import wizard, the destination layer cannot be changed. The NC data will automatically be placed on the first available empty layer. Click on the NC tool table to select the tool table to use for this file, or you may create a new tool table. If you select an existing tool table, any new tools used in this file will be added to this tool table. Dialect is the format of the file to be imported. Available options are Exelon, Exelon 2, Sieb and Meyer 1000, Sieb and Meyer 3000 5000, and Takuchi. M.N is the coordinate format. For example, a 2.3 format specifies two decimal digits before an implied decimal point and three following. 12250 represents 12.250 if the coordinate format is 2.3. Absolute mode is when all XY coordinates are referenced to a common origin. An XY point, usually 00, zero used as the basis for the location coordinates of all the data in your design. Incremental mode is when each XY coordinate is a displacement from the previous coordinate. In zero suppression, none allows coordinates to have zeros in front or back of integers, leading shows zeros only at the end of a number, and trailing shows zeros only at the beginning of a number. Select if the units of measure are in inches or metric. Character set is typically ASCII. Select plated if the NC data on the layer are plated, non-plated if the NC data are unplated, or both if you have a combination of plated and unplated data on the layer. Your tools will be defined accordingly in the tool table. When stepping and repeating a pattern, Exelon supports repeated placement of the pattern with a fixed offset by using the repeat. RN command in conjunction with the pattern offset command M02. This option is provided because of discrepancies between the Exelon documentation and the behavior of some machine controllers. Selecting this option specifies that the result of N in the command RN M02 would be the total number of instances of the pattern per Exelon documentation. So the result of R5M02 would be five instances of the pattern. If not selected, the command will produce N plus one instances of the pattern. R5M02 would result in six instances of the pattern, the original plus five. Apply to is the directory path and name of the file you are importing. Apply to all will apply these settings to all NC files currently being loaded. Format Sample displays the text version of your file. You cannot edit the contents of the file here. This is only for your reference. If you wish to save the current settings as the defaults for NC files whose format cannot be identified by VisualCam, click the Set as Default button. If an imported file can be identified, the format settings will be set accordingly, not to the default settings that you save. To apply the saved default settings to imported files, just click the Use Default button and any detected format settings are overridden. Take note again of the preview window prior to completing the import process. Because the file format is automatically detected, it should not be necessary to change any of the file format settings. However, if you do make any changes, you should click the Apply button to see those changes reflected in the thumbnail view of the file. This allows you to verify the accuracy prior to actually importing the file into your database. If everything looks correct, click the OK button to import the file. If data are imported with an incorrect format specified, they will be loaded with unpredictable results. If you inadvertently import a file incorrectly, use the undo command and re-import. If you import your data to an existing NC layer whose tool table already contains tool definitions, you will be prompted to verify and resolve any conflicts. You are also warned if any items have no associated tool defined. Select the Setup NC Tools command to view which tools are currently in use, 
and to add or change tool definitions. If the file is DXF, the import DXF dialog will appear. If the file is HPGL, the HPGL import dialog box will appear. If the file is Barco DPF, there are no format parameters to modify, so the data format will be listed as fixed. Length is the size of the file in bytes. Date is when the file was last modified. Click on the Next button to continue. Page 3 only appears if you are importing 274D files and is used to assign 274 Gerber files to aperture lists. You can drag Gerber files onto any aperture list that appears. If only one aperture list is present, all Gerber files are automatically assigned to it. Page 4 presents the final list of files that are to be imported. The files are imported to layers in the Visual Cam workspace in the order they are listed in the wizard. Clicking and dragging a file to another position within the list will reorder the files so that your layers will be in the proper order when they appear in the workspace. Selecting Suppress Import Warning Messages will prevent messages from being displayed during the import process. A log file will still be created, but you will not be prompted to view it. Click on the Finish button to complete the import command. Once the files are imported, any pertinent information or warning messages will be displayed on the Visual Cam log screen. Save the log by right-clicking on the log screen and selecting the Save Log command from the shortcut menu. To see the design, click on the main tab. This completes the video on using the import wizard to load multiple files into VisualCam in Weiss Software's video series.